Hey superstars, welcome to the Virtus Performance Podcast. This is a new episode, I'm not sure which week it is, so I'm just going to say it's a new episode. Um, for all of you guys who have been listening for the, the last 40 odd weeks, thank you very much um, for all of your support, all of your feedback. Please keep it up. Um, if it's a Facebook message or an Instagram message or an email, um, let me know what you think, what you like, things like that. I'm getting ever closer to my goal of hitting 52 weeks in a row um, and I'm still not quite sure what I'm going to do next, whether I keep this going in the same format, whether I change the format, whether I do 10 episodes at a time based around something certain, something specific, I'm not sure. Um, so if you've got ideas, if you've got suggestions, please throw them my way. If you do enjoy it, uh, please send it to your friends and family Um, please help us grow our community of listeners and people that are continuously getting better if you're not enjoying it please send it to people you don't like um, because then they can not enjoy it as well and you know we all win I guess (laughs) Um, today I have Jess Ryan on the podcast Jess is a former intern uh, a someone who calls me up and cries on the phone for an extended period of time, someone who consistently makes me be better. Uh, She's a staff member at Virtus. She's helping me grow the business, helping us grow our business. She's a coach. She's a lifelong learner and someone who I learn something off every time I see her or have a meeting with her or she kicks my butt for not doing something I said I would do. So (laughs) she's a very cool individual and I'm really excited for this chat. I hope you guys enjoy it just as much as I do. My personal and business goal is to be just a little bit better every day. I believe everyone, especially normal people, have a story to tell. The Virtus Podcast exists to help us all find small ways of consistent improvement by discussing the journey and experiences of each of our guests. So Thursday, it's... A balmy 22 degrees out and I'm sitting here with my good friend Jess Ryan. Jess, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. An absolute pleasure. First question for you, what gets you out of bed in the morning? Lots. Lots of things. (laughs) Good. What time do you get out of bed in the morning? 4.45. It's early. It is early. It is, yes, it is early. It's good though. It's very good. Why do you want to get out of bed at 4.45 every morning? Well, I'm on boot camp, so I have to. <laughs> okay, because you have to. Good. <laughs> but I like, I like getting up early because so many people get up at 8 a.m. or whatever, and I've already accomplished so much by that time. So if I get up, if I get up late, I feel like I've just wasted time. Yeah. Is it always easy to get up at that time? No. <laughs> <laughs> Define easy. <laughs> Because I, like, I constantly get it, like, I've been trying to get up at 5 a.m. every morning and it's working really, really well because that's my rule now, that's what I stick to, and you've been doing this for a lot longer than I have, but I'm sure you get it the same as I do, or it's okay, it's easy for you, you're just a morning person, Mm. right? What do you, what do you, what's your thought process when someone says that to you? So I, I used to get really frustrated, um... I used to get really frustrated when people would say that because it's not it's not an easy thing to do. And yes, it's a habit that I've adopted now, so it is easier yep. now than what it used to be when I wasn't used to waking up anywhere near that time. Um, I used to sleep in all the time. I used to, you know, sleep through all my alarms. Um, I used to wake up at... Eight, then I work up at seven, then I work up at six, then I work up at five, and now I wake up at 4.45 and it's not as much of a struggle as it used to be. You're 13 minutes ahead of me every morning, so bravo. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, other people saying that it's easy, um, I guess they, yeah, they don't know that it, it never used to be easy. It's just easier now, but some days it's not. Some days it's still a struggle, but you just do it. But the fact that you have to do it. Because you told yourself you're going to do it. Is that what kind of gets you out of bed, even the days you don't want to? Yeah. Because I... Oh, because I told... 
because I told myself I have to it was a new standard that I wanted to have and I know that me getting up at that time helps me get to where I want to be yeah is why I do it because if I if I sleep in I don't feel as good as the days when I get up and get it done yeah awesome like why did you start to set the standard of waking up at 5 a.m <clears throat> because I felt as though I was missing an opportunity to grow and be better and mm. I am someone that I'm, I'm the last thing from a morning person like you asked mum what it was like getting me out of bed when I was like in year 7 to 10 and it was a battle is the word she uses to describe it and I am part of me still that person that wants to sleep in and I still have those days where I sleep in and oversleep and then go what have I like I've just wasted four or five hours or six hours or whatever mm. but now it's I have the responsibility I feel I feel responsibility on a number of different number of different levels I feel a responsibility to myself to be a role model to the people around me um, because that allows me to hold my own standards, my, myself to my own standards repeatedly. Yes, I'm going to fuck up like all the time, but mm-hmm. that those fuck-ups don't define me. How I respond to that the next day defines me. So if I do sleep mm-hmm. into 5.15 or 5.30, which to be honest hasn't happened, like because mm-hmm. it's my new standard, my 4.58 alarm means I'm up, my feet hit the ground before 5 a.m., and like I've got 45 minutes that I didn't have before our first session of Virtus to make myself better. And usually it's do I fuel myself for the day? Do I have a coffee? Do I read a book? Do I meditate? And most mornings if I do get to work by 5.15, I get to do all of those things. Mm. So automatically I'm winning the day and I'm mm. ticking the boxes. And it's um, before 6 a.m. And it's before 6 a.m. Mm. when everyone else is asleep. And like I – I don't like the idea that you're com- like you're competing against everyone because mm. you're competing against yourself. But I also like the idea that you're competing against everyone <laughs> because <laughs> because if, if everyone else is asleep and you're doing putting in the extra extra work and hard yards, then you're going to be ahead of where they want where they are. Yeah, and you're going to get to where you want to be quicker. Where is it that you're going? Where do you want to be? Big question. I know it's a big question. Um, are we talking in a year's time, in five years' time, in ten years' time? Well, let's let's link that, that big question back to my first initial question and why do you get out of bed in the morning forward slash why do you do what you do? I like... I like... I guess I my main, my main overarching theme for what it is that I'm doing yep. at the moment is helping... Oh, goes in line with Virtus, but helping other people be better, yep. which helps me be better. Um, and across everything that I'm doing right now, that's the theme, I guess, bringing out the best in other people and trying to help them reach their potential. Um, so you're a true coach in that aspect. Yeah, yes. I guess, which I'm not even doing that much coaching <laughs> right now. <laughs> for, for those who are listening, Jess isn't just at Virtus. Um, I'm sure you're reading the bio and seeing this, that she's a coach and um, she's helping with helping. She's driving a lot of the operations process stuff at Virtus at the moment. But what else are you doing? What else are you spending your 168 hours doing? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> now, so I'm, I'm at Virtus and I, I help one of my good friends run a boot camp in the city. And I'm currently working at Monash Aquatic and Recreation Centre as well. Um, and then the usual trying to balance family, social, sleep, training, all of that. So stuff. you're trying to do life with three jobs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. What's the uh, what does that look like going forward? Because obviously, I think you're the kind of person that's always going to be helping people. But what that looks like might not necessarily be in your regular roles. What's mm. that look like going forward? So moving forward, uh, I'm not. <laughs> Hopefully, all my Monash people don't listen to this podcast. <laughs> it won't be out for like it won't be out for like six weeks. So it's okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm not particularly like Monash. I'm, I'm using in the interim um, to learn new skills, to extra to an cash end, right? flow, bit of a means to an end. Yeah. Ideally, I'd like to be at Virtus full time and then keeping boot camp as well because I get a lot out of both of them. Um, they're both really good environments and both feed my values. So Virtus, I'd be looking at doing a mixture of coaching, operational work, kind of business admin sort of stuff. Driving the growth. Driving the business growth. So, so that we can help more people, right? Like yeah. that's what it all keeps coming back to. Yeah, that's the mission. Awesome. That's, yeah, that's everything. 
Yeah. And it's something that we're working at. Mm. All of us, together. Yeah. Good. That's one. <laughs> <clears throat> How did you get involved in Virtus in the first place? Because, I, like, obviously I know the story, but <clears throat> for those who don't know you very well or don't know us and don't know how you got started, well, talk me through the process of you applying for our internship and ticking those boxes. Yeah, I was an intern. That was a long time ago, a year ago. It was only 12 months ago. We had our one-year anniversary the other day. <laughs> <laughs> we did. <laughs> it was magical. <laughs> um, I got – I had never even heard of Virtus because I'm not from anywhere around this area. Um, I need to uh, talk to my branding department, marketing department, and make sure that we're <laughs> growing our mission a little bit more than we are now. Go ahead. But I went to uni with Campbell. If any, if any of you listeners know Campbell, he was an intern and did the internship twice. <laughs> um, and I went. To, I guess he just loved the place. He's just a classic overachiever. <laughs> He's a an exceptional human. He is. Um, but yeah, so I went to uni with Campbell. He did the internship. Um, kept raving on about this place called Virtus and kept wearing the merch at uni. <laughs> and I was like, this place seems like a cult. <laughs> um, and yeah, he just kept saying to me, you have to go there. You'll love it. Like, you'll love the place. You have to go there. So I'd organised to meet up with you um, to chat about the internship and had set up a meeting. And then the morning of the meeting, typed it into maps because I thought the place was in Morty <laughs> And I was like, oh, yeah, that's fine. I used to go where around that area. Where were you we living time. at the time? So I was living in Knoxfield, which was, like, near Ferntree Gully. Okay, so big area. for those that aren't Melbourne residents, what, half an hour from Morty Alec? Yeah, like 40 minutes. Oh, half an hour from Morty Alec. Yeah. A lot longer <laughs> from Mornington. So Morty Alec seemed fine and then typed it into maps on the morning of meeting you guys. And I was like, holy crap, it's in Mornington. There's no chance in hell I'm doing an internship <laughs> in Mornington. Like, I'm just not coming down there three times a week. That's ridiculous. And then, yeah, met you guys, came to Virtus, fell in love with it straight away, got so much value from you guys from the first half an hour of meeting you. It was Coach Cam and I interviewing Coach you, Cam. right? Coach Cam underscore, yeah. Yeah. Um, and just loved it, the banter, the energy, the vibe, everything that you guys stood for. Um, and then left there being like, well, guess I'm driving to Mornington <laughs> three times a week. <laughs> What's, um, what was your first impression of Virtus? Because I'm always interested... I get, I guess, head in the sand, kind of in the stuck in the bubble, mm. knowing what I want it to be and what I experienced it to be. But it's really interesting to hear everyone else's opinion first up. I like. Oh, initially I walked in and and it was just a really cool setup. Um, really liked the look of the place. It wasn't at a time when VGT was on or heaps of people were there when I initially walked in, but how. The playfulness and just fun, cheeky banter that you and Cam both had with each other um, just made it seem like a really good environment, a really good place to be, and you were human and you weren't trying to sell me anything or you were just fun, but then at the same time you were really professional and your standards around your coaching and um, the knowledge that you had in actually teaching people how to move and then teaching them to move well and then how you progress people here. Um, so it's not just a smash sesh when you come in and it's not about losing body fat and the next fad or the next diet or whatever. It's yeah. actually about being healthy and moving well and learning how to, you know, what health is. Yeah, and I guess a, like something that we – and that's awesome that we, to get that feedback because that's what we were trying – what we are trying to build is that mm. realisation that training is such a small part of the puzzle that if you don't have life sorted, then training is not going to matter. Mm. And I think for us, we want to, we wanted to and are continually continuing to want to create an environment where people just want to be. Yeah. And then the training, the nutrition, the Pilates, all the mindfulness stuff that comes after, if someone wants to be in the space and wants to spend time in the space and wants to – continually work on themselves in that space then all the other stuff comes mm. so that's awesome that's good feedback yeah that's cool that's good you guys are all right yeah i guess <laughs> so talk to me we'll go back a little bit first mm. talk to me about why you decided to do an exercise science degree what was what factors growing up for or moved you to that path mm. okay so growing up i was always into sport um, 
I guess a lot of people go through high school, they're really into sport, they don't know what they're going to do after high school, so they'll, they decide to do sports science. Yeah. Um, that was me, and yeah. that was a lot of our, that was a lot of our staff and all, uh, most of our interns. So I guess if you're a <clears throat> exercise science student or thinking about doing being an exercise science student, mm. it's an awesome degree if you're not really sure what you want because you get a little bit of a, a lot, a little bit about a lot. Mm. Um, but it's been called the arts degree of uh, it's been called the arts degree of sport because mm. you don't necessarily have a, a lockdown career path afterwards. And I yeah. guess we see you you guys would be the same. A lot of the guys that graduate with you um, tend to go to teaching and and mm. things like that rather or than being in, yeah or EP or something like that. So it is a hard one if you're for four years. I looked at it as oh shit, I don't have a job idea at the end of this mm. when I finished I was like how, like I, maybe six months later I was like how good is this I can kind of pick out of whatever I want mm. um, and I think the biggest suggestion that we've made for interns and we're able to see you do it during you, while you're at uni is start applying what you're doing yeah. at uni and this goes for any uni students in any degree but apply what you do if you don't know what you love if you don't know where you want to be try shit Mm. Yeah, you and fail. Yeah, and fail it's over good. and over again. Yeah, just yeah. keep failing. You'll realize what you want to do by doing the shit you hate more than by re- doing the stuff you love. Mm. Um, like Greg mentioned in our meeting today, he's, I'm like, "Why do you do what you do?" He's like, "So I don't have to get a real job." Yeah, and I think I think we can all <laughs> that would suck. We can, <laughs> we can all share that sentiment, right? Yeah. Um, so growing up, sport into exercise science. Yeah, yeah. So I finished high school and I was working in hospitality. Um, I've always been work driven so it was just work 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 and then tried out a couple of courses started going to gym loved going to gym and I was like I think I'm pretty good at this um and a couple of people around me were saying you should do a PT course so ended up doing a PT course loved that wanted more knowledge um applied for exercise and sports science went traveling a fair bit um made his stupid decisions and you know stuffed around a little bit with my education but then got serious about it and and yeah ended up doing their degree and working at the same time and um, what yeah. are the what are the jobs you had while you were doing your exercise science degree so i um i was working at a gym in administration management and coaching yeah uh, so one-on-one or group stuff and then uh Went to another smaller studio that did a lot of eight-week challenges and um, kind of comp comp girls and things like that. Yeah. And then worked at Council Gym. Um, I've kind of had all of the above. Then worked at Winning, which was admin and finance in operations. Um, and then, and here we are. <laughs> so, so you've had a good crack at a big chunk of the industry. Yeah, yeah. What? What are the areas of the industry that you see the most need for improvement? Anywhere that's not Virtus. <laughs> <laughs> I promise no. this isn't intentionally an ad for Virtus. Um, but no. obviously, like Jess is someone that believes wholeheartedly in what we do. So yeah. every time she says things like that, I'll tell her to stop and genuinely think about the answer. Yeah. So it's, um, well, I don't, it's not just a coincidence that I choose to drive for an hour a day down here. Like there's not many places this isn't just a plug but there's not that many places like this in the industry so yeah you know um I, and it's yeah. cool to have stuff like you as a staff member to drive down three four days a week an hour each way mm. <clears throat> sometimes battling like picking out traffic to be here yeah and it's eight know, to ten hours out of my week that i'm just traveling yeah. to come to yeah which, which is like which when someone who doesn't have a lot of spare time that's a lot of your week mm. but you want to do it right yeah and I guess, like, we look at some of our clients. We've got people driving from the city, from Echuca, from mm. Warren Ponds, from Gippsland. Um, we've got people driving from everywhere to be at this place. And I think that's, that's reason enough to celebrate. And then we've got a real responsibility to make sure we actually do that. Yeah. Um, but we just need to get Delange getting the ferry over from Tasmania. Yeah, that would be a big one. <laughs> Shout out to Delange when she finally listens to this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what was it? So obviously you've worked in the fitness industry. What was it like working at Winning? Like what what is Winning for those that don't know? What kind of business is it? And what was it like being in that environment? Um, incredible in terms of growth and personal development. Um, you couldn't you couldn't ask for more. Um, it's a oh, so my previous job 
was a business that coaches up coaches if it's other business coaches or other personal trainers or gym owners or you know massage therapists with their own business or people starting out or um you know any sort of i guess someone who coaches other people to be better in any industry um so working in that was a rude shock to start with because i wasn't used to being in such an intense environment of radical transparency and honesty and calling people out and constantly pushing the standard to be better and not accepting any excuses for why things aren't done it's just extreme ownership um and yeah and not in a way of constantly you know this is negative this can be better all of that but having the okay what worked what didn't work what can we improve and having the extreme gratitude and thankfulness for where we are and how you know the day-to-day things that we're all doing to support each other it was just a rude shock because not many places are like that yeah um so in terms of growth and personal development it was huge um but yeah but it, it was just it's not the industry that i want to oh coaching is but um yeah it, it was very full-on for me and i struggled for a really long time in terms of the hours and in intensity and sort of hustle um yeah, it was a role that I was really, really struggling with. I had an awesome mentor, Matt Church. We love him. Matt Church, shout out. Hold on, shout out, Belle. <clears throat> <laughs> shout out to Matt Church. Shout out to Matt Church. Um, who was a massive help through that. But, yeah, he. I just really struggled in I had a, I had a really big workload, Um and you weren't just at winning at that stage, right? You were yeah, I was at uni full time at the same time. <laughs> trying to finish uni, and I think for three months of that, you were at Virtus doing the doing internship. Doing the internship. So you're someone that tends to put a little bit too much on their plate. Yeah. Or yeah. too much, or is it positive pressure for you to allow yourself to put that pressure on yourself to get stuff done? Well, it was really good. Like, I work well under pressure um, most of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was a lot for me to handle, but it, it taught me how to reach out for help. A lot. We had a few long conversations on the We had phone. a lot. <laughs> you know, some tears. <laughs> Mostly tears. Mostly tears, but um, it was really good because, I, you know, if if times get hard now, I'm like, okay, well, I got through that. Yeah. If I can get through that, I can get through anything. Yeah. Um, not, that it, not that it was bad. It was just It was a growth a period, lot. right? Yeah. Like, and <clears throat> I found out last night, this is a little sidebar, I found out last night that Tommy T's putting together a drinking game for this podcast. So when I say things like cool, cool, or when I re- reassess a quote, he has to drink or things like that. So rather than not doing those things, I'm just going to say it over and over again. <laughs> so so that, love to drink. <laughs> so he gets, like, he, he gets a little plastered. Shout um, out to Tommy T. Shout out to Tommy T. <laughs> but I don't condone binge drinking at all, like, not at all. Um, we do so condone Tommy T. <laughs> we do condone Tommy T in like high amounts. I, I binge on Tommy T. Um, but one of my one of my favorite quotes lately is "Growth is never pleasant at the time." So whenever we mm. are working towards something, and whether whenever we're going through a struggle, that the the understanding that this hurts, but it's a good hurt, and we're working towards something, is mm. something that everyone should be able to accept and. Kind of, I, I use it as a bit of fuel, right? Like mm. if I'm having a really hard time and a really hard day, um, I re- remember that. And, you know, one of the, like my background on my phone is some of these days have been the hardest days of my life, but I, but I can also simultaneously feel the indescribable personal development I'm going through. And mm. like, that's, like that's life, right? If yeah. for the people that want to grow and achieve and have success, whatever that is to them, if you need to be going through hard times, you need to be struggling, you need to be working towards it. Yeah. What, apart from the need to ask for help and reach out, what are the other things that that 10 month period taught you? So much. Um, One of the massive things was, was just don't make excuses for things. Um, You know, everything, every single part of your life, 
is your choice. Um, you, you know, it, yes, situations happen. Um, like, I think it's one of the, one of the things that even Tony Robbins says. You know, um, talking about the twin towers. Like, yes, things like that happen, and things happen that aren't in our control all the time. But some people, when the twin towers were affected took it as this big negative thing and then we're stuck in in such a huge I don't know negative mindset about terrorism and how terrible everything in the world is and all of that yeah and then other people took it as yes it was a terrible thing that happened but how how much gratitude can we have for all the people around us or you know all the firefighters that went and saved all these people's lives like look at how awesome it is that we can bring people together after such a big tragedy and it's yeah. not like those people were standing on the gratitude street <laughs> and the <laughs> other people were standing on the negativity yeah. street like well it's really interesting because i think uh, i think it's sebastian younger's book tribe mm. tribe um, it, it, he talks about that <clears throat> war tends to be the happiest time for a lot of people mm. and after events like September 11, he uses that as an example in his book, I'm pretty sure, um, that people are, are overwhelmingly happier because they're more appreciative of what they do have because they realise how quickly it can be taken away. Yeah. Right? Like as soon as – like comfort is one of the worst things for progress because you forget what you're working for and that struggle is so important. Mm. Um, and the way you – like it's that – you know, life is 90% of 10% what happens to you and 90% of how you react to it, right? Yeah. Um, if you see a, if a dog goes into a, if a happy dog goes into a room full of mirrors, he's just going to see hundreds of happy dogs smiling back at him, right? And he's mm. going to be happy. If a sad dog or a grumpy dog goes into a room full of mirrors, he's just going to see a hundred grumpy, angry dogs looking back at him and mm. he's going to have a shit day. So as soon as you're... Well, that's like a metaphor for life. Yeah, well, that's exactly if yeah. I'm happy, generally... That'll breed other yeah. happiness in others because yeah. energy feeds off energy. One, yeah, one of the things I was reading the other day was if you see one asshole. Yes. I think Jamie Smith posted if, it. Yeah, if you see one asshole, they're the asshole. If you <laughs> Shout see, out to Jamie Smith. <laughs> if, you tend, if you tend to see assholes all day, then maybe you're, you're the, the asshole. asshole. <laughs> right? Like, and you can look at that as, well, don't be an asshole. Or you can look at it, well, everything you put out, that's what the world's going to give back to you. Yeah. Um, and I think if you put out hard work then it's going to get back to you and you see that like and like everyone listening just think of the people who you hold in the highest regard think of the people that you look up to the most think of the people who are genuinely killing it in what they're doing mm -hmm. they're the probably the most grateful most uh most socially uplifting people around mm -hmm. and there's a good chance that they work incredibly hard at that like yeah they're those overnight successes that take 20 30 40 50 years to become successful they're the people yeah. that keep tipping in day in day out they're the people that keep coming back to the well and realizing yep this is a marathon this is not a sprint mm. um, and i think i was able to i learned a heap off you last year um, while you were doing that um kind of crazy period of your life where mm. you were trying to do a million things at once mm. um whether it be trying to tell you to pull your head head in when you're crying over something stupid or <laughs> where, whether you're whether it was just talking to you about what you're learning and winning that day or mm. whatever it whatever it was, those times you were able to see how quickly you were growing and you helped everyone yeah. around you grow quicker. Mm. Um, and I think that ability to see that hard time and learn from it and know that it's not going to last forever mm. is what allows you to get where you want to get to. But it's cool because even that was a choice. Yeah. Like in that time to see it as I'm grateful for this struggle like and cut and really feel it and not just sit there and be like oh yeah i'm grateful for this like actually i'm i'm really grateful that i'm going through a hard time at the moment because it's teaching me discipline it's teaching me consistency it's teaching me this 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 all of these things that i'm learning and these skills that i'm currently developing in having this hard time so actually being really present and grateful for you know hard times because you learn so much yeah from them like yeah. if if life was just easy all the time one how boring what's would that the be? Point? <laughs> yeah and what's the yeah. point like you wouldn't get those learnings mm. yeah and like you we want to we like i like almost i don't know i got a theory i've been kind of working on the last couple of days <laughs> there should never be such thing as a bad day mm. because even if something like the twin towers happens or if someone passed away or whatever it's 
like yes those things are horrible things in there in that thing happening that's a horrible thing but mm. how you react to it is going to determine how you feel the next day and the next day and the next day and the people that struggle to find positivity and joy and and happiness regularly are the, are the ones that look at something happening and go oh that's shit and bitch about it for the next four hours yeah like even if something bad does happen there's still the whole rest of the day or the whole morning beforehand where you can find gratitude in little things yeah. um and greg our physio shout out sorry shout out talks about it a lot but it's f- finding what well, when was the last time you were happy and building banks of a bank of happy memories like that to to come back to mm. um because if you've got that bank full of happy memories and when you're having a shit time over and over again then you can keep pulling from that bank and then eventually that, that'll that put you in a position to be able to start depositing back into the bank and, mm. and refilling it and being strong. Yeah, and the bigger you, you can make your bank when things are all good, when that horrible thing happens, yeah. like when if someone passed away or whatever, it is devastating But and feel that. Like be sad, be yeah. angry, let yourself feel all of whatever you want to feel. It's okay to feel that. Um, but then if you, if you have all of those happy things or, you know, things that you're really grateful for, like if, if something terrible happened tomorrow, I still have my health. I still have a roof over my head. I still have access to clean drinking water. I still have a massive support system that I've built up for myself. Like I've got a car. We have all these things. We live in Melbourne. (laughs) Yeah. We live in a very lucky part of the world. Like I, like on perspective, it's it's something we could bang on about all day. Yeah. But it's just how you respond to that that initial thing. Yesterday I had my immunizations for South America, right? Mm. 500 bucks. It took me three hours of my time, 500 bucks. And I was like, I don't know, I had like a five-minute period where I was like, far out. I can't believe I'm spending that much. And then I went, mm. you know what? We live in a time, we live in a place where I can spend $500 and not die. Yeah. <laughs> and not and not have typhoid and not have get hepatitis and hopefully not get malaria. And thanks to the travel doctor for giving me some really good advice and try not to get bitten by mosquitoes. Thank you, mate. I appreciate that. I'll try not to. Anyway. Shout out. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> Shit. Um, but but like if we if we can and this is something that I've like I'm only getting good at because I work on it every day. Mm. Like the importance of gratitude. But like how lucky are we to live in a time where I can spend five hundred bucks on that? Yeah. And but that's just a mindset thing for me. I'm also able to s- spend my money on flights to South America. I'm able to yeah. have equipment and things that will allow me to hike some red mountains and mm. and do some cool stuff. And um, and unfortunately, shout out Tommy T again. He told me that the immunizations don't immunize me against bad decisions so i can't still can't jump off big things and do stuff without getting hurt which i'm really upset about because i thought it stopped me from ha- having all those bad things happen <laughs> anyway i don't understand how immunizations work obviously <laughs> <laughs> getting <ripped off. laughs> basically um all right we went off track a little bit there not that we really have a track right um question i want to ask you is around personal development what like you're someone that is very introspective and you're very reflective on what works and what doesn't. Mm-hmm. And even if you're in a ball of tears for two hours, mm-hmm. like, and I really respect you for this, you're someone that is able to use, like feel the way you want to feel, cry mm-hmm. for that period of time you need to cry for, and then go, you know what, let's unpack this. Why am I feeling like that? Mm-hmm. What are the things that have allowed you to get to that point? Because... I feel as though self-reflection is a journey that people need to dive into and then keep chipping away at what's allowed you to get to that point where you can do that. And again, you're still on the process. You haven't, yeah. clo- you haven't clocked it yet. I don't think you're yeah, not you're nailing. I don't think I'm nailing anything, really. Everything's... Untrue. <laughs> but everything could be better. Um, True. So, Nothing yeah, it can't takes not a be improved. Exactly. Hashtag be better. Um, it, takes, it takes a long time and it takes work so it doesn't you know there was a time that probably wasn't that long ago where I would just cry and be down in the dumps for a day or a week or whatever um and that's not that doesn't serve me that doesn't help me um you know you just stay down in the dumps so I guess from that extreme and then coming out of that 
you know, on, on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> on the other side. But, you, like, but that's the thing, right? You're never on one side or the other. Like you're always no. on the line and being able to discern whether you're on the sad side or the happy side. Yeah, and you can choose. Like you, you can choose. So I can make the choice to be down in the dumps for a week, which doesn't serve me, or I can choose to in that moment, like the other day, sat in the car for 40 minutes and was bawling my eyes out, yeah. didn't know why. Like yeah. in that moment and could not stop. I was uncontrollably crying. And then I was like, okay, I can either sit here and continue to just cry, which is an option, or I can just let it all out and really think about why am I upset? Like, what is it that's currently making upset? What am I actually feeling? Because I can, I can be sad or whatever, but if I just sit there and think, oh, I'm really sad, I'm really upset, that still doesn't help me solve a problem or feel better. Mm. So, okay, specifically, like, unpack it. What specifically am I upset about? Okay, you know, because you in that state, you'll, you're likely to be overwhelmed and think, everything sucks. Like, this is the worst day ever. And use all of this big language yep. of everything in the world right now sucks. Yep. What, what's hard? Life. <laughs> but if I just come to you and say, everything in my life is hard, one, that's probably not the case. Yep. And two, that doesn't help me fix it. So if I can unpack it and say, okay, what specifically am I upset about? It's mum said something before. Okay, great. Can I go and speak to my mum about that? Yes. Okay, is it my education? No, education's going well right now. Awesome. Is it work? Oh, work, I'm a little bit stressed about this, this, and this. Yeah. Who specifically can I speak to about mm. that to help? Well, so what was your process the other day going, working through that? Because mm. you ended the day in a much more content and happy, I don't know if you weren't happy, but... You were happy, in a happier position than you were at the start of the day. So what was the process you went through? So I And it wasn't a yeah. flicking a switch process, right? No, not at all. So I, one, just cried it out. So let, let all the emotions happen. And then two, we have in our staff page our little huddle group. Yep. So um, I guess reached out to those people around me which is our work our work crew we've got a really good supportive environment yeah. so um, we use the term um enlist the help of your allies the people yeah. that want to see you succeed yeah good so um you know how to chat and just put it out there of how i was feeling um and what specifically i was you know that was getting to me um put that out there which helped me to identify and articulate what the problem actually was and then just came into work and still did the thing. So <laughs> that was one of the biggest things was um, because I'm working on consistency and discipline right now, if I'm having a, a bad hour or whatever, that doesn't stop the little things that you can still tick the box and still succeed in that day. Yeah. So I still came to work. I still trained. I still drank three litres of water. I yeah. still ate nutritious food you showed up and held yourself to the standards you'd set yeah yeah otherwise i would have just felt worse and i would have fully failed the day um so yeah, yeah i think and just enlist in the support around you and still do still keep routine like still do the things you would normally do because mm. it'll make you feel better yeah and when you can break it down like that you will allow yourself to understand well you know what 80 percent of what i was upset about was this one little thing mm. That when you identify it, it ceases to become a big problem and it ceases and it becomes something that you can just go, okay, these are the three steps I need to take to do this. And it might be talking to someone, it might be writing something down, it might be talking to talking to yourself. Yeah. Um, and I think that what we've kind of implemented as a team and I've started implementing it in the Virtus family is <clears throat> you don't actually have to talk to anyone. That's kind of the – if you don't want to talk to anyone, you don't have to talk to anyone. But mm. we go live on our Facebook uh, Facebook group and we just talk about we do it's called WBF it's called like what's going on in your world what do you focus on what are you blocked on and mm. it allows you to unpack stuff in your head mm. um, and whether you want whether like everyone's going to be different but whether you guys want to write it down whether you want to do the video whether you want to talk to someone 
go through that process. What's working at the moment? Because mm. if you focus on shit that's not working, then you're going to focus on stuff that's not working all the time. But if you focus on what is working, there's a win. Yeah. And then what's your focus today? Well, my focus is to fix this because I'm blocked on this. Mm. And, and yeah, it doesn't. It just becomes a process you go through rather than oh, everything's too hard. Life sucks. Yeah. Um, or yeah, because then you you cease to become the victim. Mm. And when you cease to become the victim, it's you take charge of everything that happens to you. Yeah. Um, it's like extreme ownership that we talk about all the time. And you know, if you haven't read Jocko Willing's book, read it because it's a game changer. But it's whatever happens is because of me. If, if something mm. positive happens, if someone reacts positively, then it's because of me. If someone reacts, reacts nev- negatively or doesn't do something that I ask of them, then I need to reframe it better. And mm. that's what you, I've seen you work on really well. And what us as a team are working on um, is that ability to own it and yeah. be transparent with each other. I think with that as well, like if you're a victim of what's happening to you in your environment, it's it's not empowering and you can't change that. So yeah. if I if my belief as a human is everything I have a choice over and I can I can control how I react and you know Lockie saying something mean to me if I get upset about that that's my choice to feel upset about what Lockie said mm-hmm. so you know things like that if you if your belief is I have a choice it's empowering and it's just you actually do have a choice whereas yeah. if I'm just a victim yeah. How should stuff? like you can't yeah. change anything, you can't change your position. Whereas if you have a choice about everything, you can change anything in your life. Yeah, 100%. And how, how important for you has been surrounding yourself with the right people? Like 100%, that. 100%, yeah. Um, massively. So, a big thing for me, like, I love my family, absolutely love them. My mum's awesome, my brother's awesome, like, my niece, love her. Um, but I can't live with them. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm sure a lot of people can re- relate. Yeah. And it's not it's not a bad thing. It's just not an environment that I want to be in. So I can't be the best version of me and still live at home because mum and my brother both have completely different belief systems to me and they don't believe that everything is a choice and you know sometimes they do play the victim in a lot of things so I get very frustrated because I can see how adopting that mindset of everything is a choice yeah can help them so much yet they they choose not to help themselves so now that I've moved out of home and I surround myself with people who have similar values and who take ownership of their life and their decisions and their direction and all of that yeah and you know coming down to Virtus and working at Virtus with people whose values align and working at boot camp with Geordie and you know surrounding myself with other people who are constantly trying to better themselves is massive rather than being surrounded by bitching and people who tear you down and snide remarks and all of that yeah bullshit stuff that you just don't need if the yeah if the people that are in your circle aren't jumping for joy every time you succeed you probably need a new circle yeah right what it, make your own circle <laughs> yeah, make your own circle there's like there's if anyone um has read outliers by malcolm gladwell like there's different kinds of people in the world right there's connectors mm. and if you want to put yourself in a an environment where it's constant growth, you're in charge and it's your choice to find that environment. Mm. Um, some people build it, some people join it, um, but like you've sought out the people you want to be spending time with mm. and you've identified the people that you want to be spending time with but that don't necessarily serve your growth and your needs. And it's just a matter of discerning between the two and then going, well, you know what, I'm going to spend, put more of my energy into this. Mm. Um have, what are the like? Are you, I know you. I'm going to cut you off quickly because I have a it. point to say on do that. Do it. Cut me off. Wow. So, <laughs> interestingly, on that topic, because that was a thing that I noticed back when I was at winning and at placement and at boot camp and doing all those things. I um, was talking to 
my osteo Geordie who I work at Brewcamp with and I was saying how cool it was that I'm constantly surrounded by all these awesome people now yeah. and I, I go to Vernus and there's so many awesome people there and I'm at Brewcamp and there's so many awesome positive people there and I'm at winning and surrounded by all these incredible people and he said to me that's not a coincidence mm. you're not just there's not just places in the world where all the awesome people <laughs> hang out like, you yeah. know, like you're because I'm becoming better, I'm attracting more positive people. So if if I'm more positive and more uplifting and all of that sort of stuff, that's what yeah. I'm attracting. So, yeah. you know, like, if like you can be like. better. Yeah, like attracts like. Yeah. yeah. And I thought it was so cool. And I was just like, oh, yeah, I haven't just stumbled into the only three awesome places. Like, <laughs> you know, that doesn't yeah. just happen. Yeah, exactly. But then, like, it shows how in charge of your, of your own destiny or or uh, journey or yeah. know, what like what steps you take today will determine where where you go tomorrow and where you go yeah. down the track like, and you'll find the same thing like you yeah. doing your business course and surrounding yourself with other people who are better than you and who <laughs> but you know people yeah, that oh, know 100%. better and are more developed in those areas like go hang out with people who are better and it lifts you up but understanding like and then understanding it's kind of twofold, right? Like it's environmental. Put yourself in the environment where you know people are going to help you succeed and they're going to want you to succeed. Yeah. Um, and it co- it takes resources to do that, right? It takes mm. your time. It takes your money. It takes your energy. But if you're doing that, then you're constantly growing. And then next thing you know, you're miles ahead of where you would have been mm. and miles ahead of people that didn't take that path. Like, yeah. Like one of my biggest fears is doing the same shit now that I'm doing in five years. Like I want to be... I want to be a completely different person in terms of growth and improvement and things like that. Like mm. I, th- I think my values and my vision will remain the same, but it'll adapt and it'll grow and it'll evolve. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I think that ability to figure out what you want <clears throat> out of life and out of what you're doing and have an intention, like one of the things um, business coaches bang on about all the time Shout is <laughs> is having an intention for everything. Mm. So we have a podcast. You asked me inside of this podcast, what's your intention for today's podcast? Like, mm. what's our intention for today's training session? What's our intention for today's meeting? What's my intention for, for dinner tonight? Like, yeah. my intention for dinner tonight might be to have a really good conversation with KP, Leroy, and Tyler around the dinner table. Yeah. If I go in with I don't have an intention, good chance I'll just sit on my phone and won't talk to them. And, and like, that's not what I want, right? Yeah. Like, so this needs to be my intention. So... I think we try and we try and do so many different things at once mm. um, because we want to tick all of the boxes. Mm. But when you go, what's my intention? Well, my intention right now is just to have a really cool conversation. Mm. Um, is to hopefully put some some of our thoughts out into the world wide webs and have people learn from it. Like that's our intention for today's podcast. And yeah. just have a really good conversation. Yeah, yeah. And, but it's as simple as that. Like. When you and the process is cool, we sit down, we just have a chat. And I'm not worried about the outcome. I'm not worried about mm. how many people listen to it or how much feedback I get from it. Um, but if you are enjoying it, please send me an email. <laughs> um, Share if, it around, guys. If you're not enjoying it, please don't. Please send me an email and tell me why. If you, yeah, tell your friends and family. Like keep, keep like <laughs> if you're enjoying this stuff, spread it out there because I want more people to listen to it. Mm. Um, but that's not my focus. My focus is on our conversation now and being present now and I think when you know what you want you realize that well yeah I've got to work on where I'm headed but day to day is most important yeah um what are you grateful for like what's the focus for the day what's not working because then you can go well surely how do I get better Mm. but it's very cool though because if you're if you're catching up for a friend uh if you kept I can't even speak if you're catching up with a friend yeah and your intention is to add value to their life or to have a really good conversation or to become closer friends in that hour or whatever yourself it is. in on what's been happening in each other's lives because as we get older, the amount of time you can spend with each person diminishes, right? Yeah, and you're probably not going to go see a movie for that Yeah. because you won't be speaking to them the whole time. Yeah. So, it, you know, be there and actually be there. Don't be there on your phone, distracted, emailing, texting at the same time. Like yeah. if you're... You know, if you are working, focus on the process, focus on the input, focus on the value that you can provide to whoever's in front of you in that moment. Don't focus on the outcome of 
whatever it may be Mm. because you just put so much pressure on it like focus on i'm gonna hang out with Lockie today and we're gonna have an awesome conversation and whatever outcome of that yeah but yeah i've always been a big fan of like if you do things for the right reasons the right thing will happen yeah um and i think if you are true to your values and beliefs and visions and everything will work itself out even if you have those hard struggle times that we talked about earlier on Mm. what are your values what are the things that you value most highly my health and fitness is a big one for me yeah um obviously i wouldn't be working in this industry a big one is honesty um i just don't think i just don't think dishonesty ever serves anyone and that's, it's a hard thing to be 100% honest. Because it hurts, right? It hurts and it's hard to sometimes be completely honest with yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, Definitely. If it is, you know what, I actually, I fucked up. Like, don't make excuses for yourself. Just admitting that is hard sometimes. Um, being completely honest with other people. Like if someone oversteps a boundary of yours... It's hard to say to someone in front of your face, hey, what you just did isn't cool. Like, okay, you know, if that's how you want to speak, speak like that, but I don't get spoken to like that. And that's not rude. It's just you putting out there what you're okay and what you're not okay with. Mm. And I feel like the ability to be able to do that is really important. Because otherwise I'd be hurt from a situation and... And nothing changes for next it. time and the time after and the time after and that becomes normal. Yeah. If you can go, whoa, whoa, whoa I'm not okay with that. Set your boundaries, mm. set your standards, set the, the bandwidth you want to be operating in. And then yeah. every conversation or interaction you have after that will all serve what you want and yeah. will serve the needs of each individual, a part of it. And then... Yeah. Everyone gets better. Everyone improves. Yeah. And I think, yeah, like for me and I'm, like I know for you, growth is kind of the most most important thing at the moment, at the moment where it's just like we want to grow the business, obviously. We want to grow the prof- like our, us as professionals and as mm. um, managers and operation peoples in a business, but that mm. personal development needs to come first. Yeah. Um, and if we can be better, then everything else can be better. Yeah. Yeah. One of the... One, one of the big kind of ideas that I like is if if you can't look after your own bedroom or your own cleanliness, don't mm-hmm. tell someone to look after theirs. Like yeah. it's it's you have to be the person who uphold those standards. And like I'm the first person to say that I don't have a cleanest bedroom, mm-hmm. but I'm working on it. I'm mindful of it. I'm aware of it so that when I see it and go fuck, I need to clean up. Like, mm-hmm. but it's making time to go. When's that important to me? Like. Tonight, I'm going home after after work and I'm going to spend an hour cleaning because I'm not mm. okay with those standards that I've been – I'm not okay with the what I've been keeping, which is not up to my standards. Yeah. Um, it's just prioritizing. Yeah. Because today, that might really be important to you. But yesterday, like having yeah. a really good night with KP or something like that yeah. might have been more of a priority than 100%. you having a clean room. So yeah. you're putting, you know, your relationship before the cleanliness of your environment yeah. at that point in time. But that's my, fine. but that's my choice. And right? it's your choice. Yeah. The problem where a lot of people get is they try and fix everything at once. Mm. Um, but one thing we realize is, well, if you if your training and money are the two issues that are, you're struggling with the most at the moment, mm. then you getting on top of your training will help you sort out your money, and you sorting out your money will help you sort out your environment and all those other things, and then. Next thing you know, you're six months down the track and you haven't felt like you made a change, but you look back at where you were when you set those goals or when you wrote those things down that you weren't happy about and you've mm. ticked them all off mm. because you invested in the process and focused on the process. Well, how we do one thing is how we do everything. Uh, yeah, another quote, Tommy T, drink up. <laughs> <laughs> he sent me the list <clears throat> and he doesn't want me to say pull the trigger, pull the trigger, pull the trigger. He doesn't want me to say play on. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to want me to say yeah good or good from you. <laughs> good from you. He doesn't want to hear bottles or anything. <laughs> he doesn't want to hear that's amazing. He doesn't want to hear me quoting things. Tom is very demanding. I know. <laughs> I don't know if he doesn't want to hear it, but I think when he does hear it, he was going to have a frothy. He's going to be drinking a lot I right know, now. <laughs> I know. Lockie mentions a podcast he was listening to. 
I've been listening to a lot of Joe Rogan podcasts lately and a lot of Tim Ferriss podcasts lately and a lot of Adventure Fit podcasts lately Burnus for those podcasts. who are wondering. A lot of Burnus <laughs> podcasts. True. Treat yourself, Tommy T. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you see your the most growth coming for you in the next two to three years? Good question. I'm aware it's a hard question because I would struggle to answer it. Yeah. Uh, one of my big focuses is, is communication. So the I feel like the better I can get at my communication and learning how to communicate with other people better and more um, efficiently or more effectively um, – you know, Greg was asking the other day, like, what's the point of communication? And it's it's a hard thing to answer, but it's so – if you can do it effectively. Do you remember the answer he gave? Oh, it was some phil- philosophical King Greg It was magical. Answer. I think it's something along the lines of communication should be to adduce, to bring out learning or a – And behaviour ch- change. A change in behaviour. Yeah. Um, because most people think communication, well, it's just me telling it's someone something. People. It's yeah. just talking. Well, but it's verbal, non-verbal. Yeah. There's so yeah. many different ways of communication. Yeah. And I really like that. Mm. Um, yeah. And what are the resources you use to improve that communication? Because I think mm. a lot of people get stuck in, oh, I want to improve this. Well, f- shit, how do I do it? Yeah. Or actually doing it. Yeah. Um, rather than just saying, this yeah. is what I want to get better. So, yeah, difference between knowledge and knowing. Knowledge is understanding the theory behind something and knowing is applying it practically and figuring out, well, fuck, this doesn't work or this works or this works better. Mm. Um, what are the things that you do to make sure it's knowledge rather than knowing? Um, ask for help. Go to people who do the thing that you suck at or yeah. that you're struggling at and hey how'd you do this yeah what habits what daily things do you do that makes you good in this area um and do that like model that behavior um like go to people who are good at it already read books listen to podcasts do some research um go do courses that teach yeah. what you want to learn and then try it and stuff it up <laughs> like <laughs> If you yeah. have a conversation with someone and it doesn't go well, after it, think, okay, what what part of that did I stuff up? Yeah. Like, but be know. okay with that because that's yeah. what helps you learn and grow. Like, if, yeah, we always want to find that little bit of suck point <laughs> so that we go, I'm good, I'm good, that's I'm good. That's a technical term. Yeah, I suck. <laughs> cool. There's my there's my limit. Now I'm going to work through that. And then your yeah. suck point changes. Yeah. That's a thing now. I'm going to. The suck that. point. The suck point. Or <laughs> you suck at. And like, if you constantly. If you constantly avoid the things you suck at, you'll always suck. Mm. And that suck point won't change. Mm. I'm writing that down. We just need to move the suck point further forward. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But life is just moving the suck point forward so that that you can get further. I'm going to write a blog post on the suck point. (laughs) Put that on my list. Put that around the suck point. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Like, burst through the suck point by learning and things like that. And it comes from... I find that I can improve other areas, certain areas of my life by focusing on others. So Mm -hmm. if I am struggling with my management skills at work and I'm not able to adduce learning from my staff like I would like to, then Mm. maybe I need to read a book about uh, about psychology or about... Mm. about like how the human brain works or I need to learn learn something about neurology like Mm. I've like one of my goals this year is to read 52 books it was 30 something but I've changed it because I've read a few already (laughs) but goal is to read 52 books and I'm 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 realizing that I'm reading things that aren't necessarily directly related to what's going on like I'm not Mm. just reading management books yeah I'm reading life books I'm reading psychology books I'm reading psychotherapy books I'm reading um, like storybooks and reading books about Buddhism, like yeah, and all of these things they all link, link into each other, and it's just constant improvement. And then when you open your mind, I was having a conversation with my sister the other day, and <clears throat> she was talking about how, and obviously everyone knows this already, but how when you're in a positive mindset and a negative mindset, you view the world differently. Yeah, right. So I can't remember what it, what it's called, and I don't really have time to try and find it um what it it was actually called but 
she was saying that people will inherently, and this is like, oh, f- I'm going to find it, but mm. people will change what they are learning and what they are viewing depending on how they're actually feeling. Yeah. Um, I'm going to find out where is it. Well, everyone's map of the world is different. So, yeah. like, no one thinks like I think and no one thinks like you think. But we all yeah. think that other people think like us. <laughs> so then when people don't seem to get it, yeah. we get really frustrated. But everyone thinks differently. It's called the Muller liar illusion. Mm. And it suggests that sadder people don't actually visually process the world the same way happier people do, right? Which we understand. But the way we, we tend to look at things rather than big picture, we look at things if we're sadder, we look at things in like like micro thing like we look at the granular details of this sucks this sucks this sucks mm. when we're happy we can look at things bigger picture and go oh all this struggle is going to help me get to get to where i want to get to mm. and <laughs> she sent me like a big thing about she's like i'm writing a paper on it at the moment i'm like can you summarize it in 500 word blog post for me and send it to me <laughs> and she <laughs> new Virtus team member <laughs> well, basically and, and then and i was like i love that stuff and i want you to validate my cognitive biases and validate my opinions and yeah. she goes i want to challenge your opinions i'm like i want you to challenge my opinions because if if you prove to me or show show me that my opinions are invalid mm. then my opinion changes and the mm. way i view something and go well that's not right this is what i what i now think like mm. anyone that gets like that's the i think that's the biggest part of self-reflection is understanding that if you don't know something then f- like learn it and if you yeah. Do know something and you realize it to be wrong, don't just be the person that buries your head in the sand and goes, no, I'm right, like, and and justify it mm. till you're red in the face. Like, except I don't know, I don't know, you don't know what you don't know. So mm. if you can actually go, well, okay, I was wrong about that, and then that's, I don't know, I find it incredible, incredibly empowering to be able to go, well, there's all this shit I don't know. Sweet, let's try and find out. Yeah. Um, and I want, like, I think Beck asked me the same question. Um, what's something you want but you don't have right now? And I'm like, the answers to all my questions. <laughs> <laughs> I just want all the answers. I just want all the answers. <laughs> well, with that as well, like in, in being right or wrong, like sometimes it it actually doesn't matter who's right or who's wrong or if you're in the right or if you're in the wrong. Yeah. It goes back to what's my intention from this? So if you're having an argument with someone and pushing your point and pushing your need to be right. Yeah. Like you could both be right. Well, you're missing the point, right? If, if that's your pure intention, I want to be right. Well, you're missing the point because yeah. it should be, well, I want to know what's right. And then I want that to become my new, my new uh, bias or my new opinion. Um, because then all that you focus on is growth and then that ego that's sitting around going, I need to be right, I need to be right, I need to be right, mm. it ceases to become a factor because you're constantly chasing what is correct, not what you think is correct. Mm. Um, and sometimes you're going to be right, sometimes you're going to be wrong. But And like as a, I've realized that as a coach, as a role model to some people, as a brother, sister, friend, um, you know, f- team member of Virtus, like if I don't know something then I want to find out and then mm. that's putting people around you that are kicking goals in that area and seeing what they think mm. and then formulating your own assumption mm. on that and then everyone wins because you grow and move forward and things like that mm. Mm. very cool yeah I have a bunch of questions to ask you um, <clears throat> these you can go deeper into this or you can be really short and succinct mm-hmm. first one you mentioned you've made a bunch of stupid decisions what's the stupidest decision you've ever made Ooh. stupidest decision I've ever made um people listening at home just think amongst yourselves while Jess tries to think of an answer to this question <laughs> there's been a, I've made a lot of I've made a lot of dumb Choices, but everyone has made. I'm grateful that I've made them. Um, probably the stupidest decision I've ever made. It's it's honestly probably around alcohol consumption. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like I, a lot of my youth was partying, binge drinking, that's all led to a lot of stupid decisions that have ended up 
in I don't know environments like that I looking back now is like, well, what not safe like yeah. <laughs> if I'm I don't know drunk at 4am and stranded on Chapel Street or stupid <laughs> things like that like yeah. which at the time you think is funny or whatever but in hindsight <laughs> dumb what was I doing yeah what was I doing I was, um, um, I was listening to Jordan Peterson's book the other day 12 Rules of Life and he's talking about drunk people and obviously it lowers our inhibitions right mm. we all know that but the reason why we do stupid things while we're drunk and we don't think about the consequences is because alcohol does something to your brain where you cease to actually think that a future exists. You don't think about mm. what – you don't think about the consequences because in your – like it's all about the here and now. Yeah. Um, so you – and I'm probably misquoting this and fucking this up, but I'm okay with it. Listen to the book and read the book because it's amazing. Um but it basically says that you will, you cease to think about the future. Like, obviously, we all know that when we're drunk. Intuitively, we understand that. Yeah. But, like, if you ask someone about um, tomorrow, like, when they're 15 beers deep, they'll be like, there is no tomorrow. <laughs> Fuck tomorrow. Like, that's, like, seriously the mindset. That's future Loki's problem. Exactly, right? That, but, that, but that is if, like, that's the effect of alcohol. So, it's like, yeah. it, like, I think it's so crazy that people can get blackout drunk. And I, like, I've done it. We've all been there. Mm. And you could make a decision that, that impacts the rest of your life. Yeah, absolutely. In that position. Mm. So when you, if you do get to that point, you better hope there's some people around you that are looking out, out for you and, yeah. and things like that. Absolutely. Because that's the biggest thing. Like people can change the whole course of their life by something they do stupidly when they're, when they're intoxicated. So, yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's a really interesting one. Don't get to that point. Or if you do, get into it, do it in a safe environment. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, seriously. Then eat, eat a, I don't know, a lot of food or take a nap or just like... <laughs> just eat three kebabs and go to sleep. <laughs> Been there. <laughs> Have you had a defining moment? Yeah, I feel like I've had a lot of defining moments. Give me give me your top two. Um, okay, one of, one of the top ones I had, it was back when I, well, a couple of years ago, I was in a job um, working at a gym for sort of four or five years, thought I'd be there forever, um, had sort of put all my heart and soul into that place and those people, went on a three-month holiday um, and then came back. And the day that I got back, um, oh, well, the day after I got back, I had a meeting with my bosses and they told me that they'd had a restructure, they're making my position redundant and I could either step back into a lower position um, and sort of pick up shifts here and there, yep. or I could take a redundancy package. Yep. And the way they'd framed it was oh, there was a lot of politics going on in the background. Yep. Um, they, they framed it as though I would never leave because they knew how loyal I was and how committed I was and how much work I was putting in, so they never expected me to take the redundancy package. Yep. But in... You know, I'd, I'd sat on that and I took it home with me and and my big, I call it a fuck it moment. <laughs> Excuse the swearing. Good. No, play on. <laughs> but I, the, the courage that it actually took me for, to say no yeah. and to take the redundancy package because I knew I was worth more than that um, and to have that conversation with my bosses saying, I've worked my asses off for you guys and yeah. to come back from this to, to this, like I'm worth so much more than this. I value myself more than this. And to get, to be able to say that and say, I'm taking the redundancy package to no job. Like I've it's just pretty, come back from a three pretty, month holiday. It's pretty empowering, right? Yeah. And I walked, I was crying. They were crying. Like it was a huge, huge big thing. Um, but yeah, I think it was the first time in my life that I've really stood up for what I believe I'm worth, and that's that hasn't that's awesome. paid off so much. Like it's paid off so tenfold. Well, thank you to them for making that fuck up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But well, it's cool. Like it's cool how sliding door door moments like that happen, right? Like mm. if you if you decided that you know what Mornington's too far, you would be living a whole different life right yeah. now. Um, like I wouldn't have met you and I wouldn't have met a lot of the people that you've introduced me to that have, mm. are becoming really important parts of my life. So, mm. you know, that whole butterfly effect thing is kind of cool. Yeah. Really cool. This one's a little less deep, this mm. one. What's your favourite fun fact? Fun fact. 
っと I got one for you. I don't know any fun facts. I learned a new one yesterday. Go. What were you thinking of yours? 1.5 million people died last year in the world from diabetes. That's not a fun fact. Ready? It's still a fact. All facts are fun. <laughs> Out of 56 million totals. 56 million people died in the world last year. Or mm-hmm. last year, 2016. Um, I'm probably cocking this up, but I don't care. So 1.5 million from diabetes. Mm-hmm. Only 800,000-ish died from human violence. So twice as many people were killed by sugar than human violence last wow. year. Wow. And which one are we kind of kicking up the most stink about? Yeah. yeah. Not saying both aren't issues, mm. but I don't know. I find that really interesting, the, the way humans wow. chase down a, an idea without necessarily looking at numbers mm. like that. Wow. Um, yeah, what's yours? Mm. Mm. I've got no facts. Oh, Boring. I know, I've got nothing. All right, next one. What advice would you give a younger 15-year-old version of yourself? Back yourself in. Good. Back yourself in. Um, I fail fast. Yeah. Like stop procrastinating and, you know, if you're not happy in what you're doing, change. Like you can change your whole life in basically an instant yeah like if you're not happy in your job quit and get another job spot on like if if your house environment you're not happy in change it if your relationship you're not happy in change it if your friendship group you're not happy in change it like Mm. and you know if you quit one job and go to the next and you know that's not it keep moving keep moving Yeah. yeah just like try things out fail because you learn from them and then you will find the thing that yeah. is your thing. I think that's a big one. Like it's <clears> – <throat> you've got to find that balance between the like fuck it moments and I'm going to keep working at this mm, mm-hmm. and you've got to figure out – and I think all that, that all that comes from your your values and what your vision is. If you Like yeah. your vision will change. It's fluid and it's something that we talk about a lot of, at the moment. We're talking about a lot at the moment of Virtus but mm. – if your vision is to help more people, cool. Do things that serve that. If your vision is yeah. to pay the bills, make lots of money, cool. Do something that serves that because as long as everything comes back to living up to your values and living up to your vision day in, day out, you're sweet and you're probably going to be fulfilled and happy. Yeah. And that was a big thing that I got from Matt, Matt Church was – shout out. <laughs> um, he sat me down – one time back when I was at winning and I was, I was just so unhappy and trying so hard and just feeling like a failure every yeah. day. Um, and I was crying to him just being like, I'm, I'm trying so hard and it's, you know, six or seven months later and I, I'm still, I still don't feel like I'm succeeding. Like I'm still not taking care of my health. I'm still not training. I'm still not hydrated. I'm still stressed. I'm still, you know, I just can't seem to get it. And he was just like, is this, is this job, because your job is such a big part of your life, is this feeding or taking away from your values? So we sat down and nutted out, you know, what my values are, because a lot of people don't think about what they value. Um, Homework task for everyone listening, write down your five values. Mm. Um, yeah, write down what they are and why, <clears throat> and and go, is, is what I'm doing now serving this? Mm. Like if it's, you know, you're busting your ass through uni to get to somewhere that is going to serve it, awesome, it's serving it. If you're working mm-hmm. in a job that you hate and it's not serving it, like change something. And I'm not naive to think that people don't have reasons like that they – reasons or blocks or roadblocks to stop them from changing. Mm-hmm. Or if you're not happy with your health, is it something that you can change? Um, because, yes, there's going to be struggle and there's going to be hard times, but remember growth is never pleasant mm-hmm. in like at the time. So – Go through those struggles and you end up like where you are in a happier, more fulfilled, more content place. Yeah. And now like I'm still finding it hard, you know, balancing three jobs isn't easy. We'll get to two soon. <laughs> but it, it's feeding my values. Mm. So I'm in a much better place. And it wasn't that I wasn't in a bad environment. I was in a great environment. It just wasn't feeding my values. Yeah. I like it. Mm. Little segue from that. What is success to you? Success to me, I think it's 
I think one part of it is living completely true to myself and who I am as a person and not, you know, having to put on an act or, um, I don't know, having to pretend I'm something that I'm not. I think if I'm, you know, really, truly successful, I can be myself and be honest and have the tough conversations with people sometimes if they're stepping over boundaries or I can, you know, have the conversations with people around me if they're dropping their own standards or I can accept criticism if I'm dropping my standards or, um, you know, I can, I can push myself to be better. Um, yeah, I think success is, is living true to yourself, truly getting to a point where like as lame as it sounds, like you actually truly love the person that you are, which is a really hard thing to do. Yeah. Um, sometimes like to sit there and actually be like, I'm really proud of myself and what I'm doing and who I am as a person. Cause you just don't talk like that with people. Yeah. Like you don't have those conversations. Well, yeah. But a lot of people do like, I'm starting to realize that you can have those conversations mm. and like we and have those conversations. No, we have those conversations sometimes like mm. KP and I are working on having those conversations more often, mm. um, you know, with, bunch of guys at work and a bunch of clients and friends like i would start having those conversations because it's i don't know it's it's liberating i love it Mm. i really really enjoy talking about stuff that's hard yeah um like it's it's the how are you doing yeah good thanks there like it's the yeah like that's what we're so used to yeah but get past that and go how are you doing and then you end up Mm. like diving into each other's worlds and you both come out feeling amazing and feeling Mm. like i can genuinely help people just by talking Mm. And everyone we have here, like, all our Virtus family are awesome. Like, yeah. Palsy's awesome. <laughs> Shout, out. Shout out to Palsy. Shout out to Kaz. Kaz is awesome. Yeah. Like, Mon, everyone who comes in the doors mm. is awesome. Yeah. And they're awesome because they're, like, vulnerable. They're vulnerable yeah. enough to or they're working on being vulnerable so they're vulnerable enough to go you know what i suck at this help i need mm. help i need to work through it yeah um and that's something that that's why we do what we do at the end of the day mm. what's your biggest struggle at the moment biggest struggle at the moment Putting myself first. Which is a very consistent answer with most people that work to help other people. Mm, yeah. yeah. Why, why is it a struggle and what are the things, what things are you doing to work through it? So it's a struggle because I'm so, I'm so caught up with well, I have been so caught up with how everyone else around me is and how I can help all the people around me. And, you know, if my clients at bootcamp are, are doing well or what sessions they're going to yeah. or, you know, how how our team are going and if they're happy and um, my family or my friends or anyone around me because um, I just want to... I don't know, help people. You just get caught up in that and you, you kind of can go through the motions and forget, hang on, I actually need to help myself because I'm helping trying to keep all these other people accountable to their goals. Who's I need to keep I need, <laughs> need to keep someone, me accountable yeah. to my goals and yeah. well, take care of myself and my health. And well, we've kind of co- like talking about it a lot, like we've kind of coined it just a two way accountability, right? Like, mm. I want someone keeping me accountable for the stuff that I need. That I say I'll do and the stuff I need to do and yeah. things like that. And like you're good at that, KP's good at that. Um, mm-hmm. Different people in my life are good at that. But at the end of the day, it's on me. So yeah. I've got to keep myself accountable. But at the same time, other people keeping me accountable helps. So yeah. it's like yeah. it's that <clears throat> like that teamwork, that chain analogy that we're talking about in the meeting today. Shout out to Coach Cam for that. <laughs> um, it's you know if you like if I fuck up my accountability and you give me a kick up the bum say look after yourself then 
when you do it, when you stuff up, I'm be like, Jess, you should be drinking your water because that bottle looks awfully full right now. I know. <laughs> it's, Jamie's it's, gonna be so mad. <laughs> and, it's, and it's little things like that. So, you know, and it doesn't always have to be someone who's just a friend because, or a friend or family, because they've all everyone's got their own shit going on. Mm. Like investing in things like coaching and mm. um, accountability stuff, and like go see a dietitian, go you know, go see a performance coach you know go talk to a psych or a doctor or something like that because that's you filling your cup that's you putting back into you Mm. Um, that's you looking after yourself and actually allowing yourself to ask for help which Mm. is the biggest thing which is yeah I don't know that's just ask for help because everyone I'm a big believer that everyone wants to help Mm -hmm. Um, you've just got to find the right person people at the right time who want to help and who are able to help yeah 100% and like having Having an external coach, like obviously we believe in it because we're coaches, so yeah. we believe in the service. Yeah. But having that, if you're constantly stuffing it up, and like I've done this recently, I've enlisted in coaches mm-hmm. um, to help me because it got to the point where, you know, my housemate asked me when I was training the other day, like, and it was the one question that really hit me. Um, and it was, are you happy with where you're at? with your training yeah. right now. So if there's an area in your life where if someone sits there and asks you, are you happy with your financial situation or are you happy with your social life or are you happy with your health or your you know, nutrition or training or whatever it is, and the answer is no and it's something that's really important to you or if, if it's one of your biggest values – like I sat there and he asked me that and for the last two years I haven't been happy with my health and fitness and that's not it's not just a month has gone by yeah two years is a long time <laughs> yeah it's a big still big chunk of your happy. life yeah so I was like stuff it I'm gonna go pay someone to help me with this because yes I know all the things but I'm currently not doing all the things yeah so hire someone to help you yeah. do it like uh, ask for help yeah people want to help yeah the definition of insanity is doing the same shit over and over again expecting different results so if not having a coach for 12 months hasn't worked cool enlist the help of a coach yeah and you know like we're not just saying it because we because we want people to hire us as coaches yeah just go anywhere but like I enlisted the help of my allies like I hire Cam hire, I've hired Cam to be my coach mm. um yes yeah, so, I haven't been seeing him as much as I would have liked, but that's a that's a I'm aware of that decision. Mm. Um, I'll see him tomorrow. But I've hired Greg to help me with my rehab footy and just or, and just make sure that my body's going to be resilient enough to get through the footy season. So mm. when you and like you know I enlist Anna to be my yoga instructor, like mm. I enlist you to keep me accountable on work stuff. Like mm. I'm not an island, and I don't want to be an island. I want to I want to have people helping me all the time and. Mm. Everyone wants to help. That's the best bit. Like, all you got to do is ask. And as soon as you ask, people feel empowered because they want to help you. And then, you know, everyone wins. Mm. It's a beautiful, magical, symbiotic environment where everyone's working for each other, mm. which is I cool. That's why um, a cool coaching seminar, I guess, um, the other week. And um, the guy who was running it dropped a really cool knowledge bomb that was, you know, there's, there's no book of Oprah Winfrey that she's written with her like on the front being like how I did it all by myself yeah like (laughs) no successful person who's written a book about how they became successful or how they're winning at life or how they've achieved you know going into space or creating the light bulb or like whatever it is in history yeah not one single person is being like, yes, how I did it all alone. Yeah, yeah. It's all how I did it with the help of my team. Yeah. Or with the help, the help of my all tribe, these people around me. The help of my community and family. And yeah, and so yeah. And the, the more, the bigger your family can become, the more people you can ask for help. Yeah. And I've found that with like, I think you, not only knowing you for a year made me realize that most, a lot of the people, not most, a lot of the people in my life that are making the biggest impact to, to my growth day to day are people I didn't know a year ago mm. which is kind of cool that's a cool thing to think about that in 12 months I might have pissed you guys off and found a whole new bunch of people <laughs> <laughs> who knows but it's cool because like especially with 
coaches or with people who are holding you accountable or, you know, trying to help you to get to that next level, they don't, they're not the people who keep you comfortable. Yeah. They're not the people who tell you what you want to hear all the time. They're the people who have the hard conversation with you and tell you you're dropping your standards. Like what you're doing and the excuses you're coming up with yeah. are bullshit and they're holding you back and you're holding yourself back. Well, that's what, like... And it's hard to hear. That's what, like, Mitch said the other day, like... like shout out to Mitch. Shout out... Fuck. <laughs> he, he just kind of says, like, our standards need to lift. We, we are not living up to the standards we set. And, like, if... Like, I wish I was as mature and, and like, I respect him so much for this, his ability mm. to look at bigger picture. Like, he's... 21 and he's probably one of the most mature people I've heard us like mm. his ability to look at the bigger picture and say this isn't good enough we need to be better is awesome yeah. and like as soon as you can go this isn't what I said I would do and mm. this is what isn't what we said we would do then the whole standard lifts because everyone is aware of it and, yeah. and that's what having a coach allows you to do yeah yeah and you might hate them in that moment <laughs> oh mate because so hearing much. that is hard yeah. in that moment but then afterwards it gets you past your suck point yeah, and a hundred percent, you're like, thank you. Yeah, because I needed to hear that, even though I hated you right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like fuck you, but you're right. Like, yeah, that's, that's the reaction. Yeah, um, and that's why, like, learning to embrace negative feedback in so many different things is just incredible. Mm. All right, we're gonna wrap this up. Mm. If you could be remembered in one sentence, what would it be? Oh. One sentence. This is hard. Yeah. What would you say? I didn't say it'd be easy. Oh, that's a really good one. Um, someone who made the world a better place and had fun doing it. Mm. Mm. Just think amongst yourselves at home. <laughs> I think... I, I want to leave people better off after me being there. Cool. So if I have a conversation with someone, I want them to leave that conversation better than Bet, before. Better is good because it's not happier. It's not like um, more comfortable. It's better. Mm. Yeah. It you, doesn't need to be better in that moment, but after. Good. Really, really good. Be better. <clears throat> Who are the three people you look up to and why? Hmm. Three people I look up to and why. Number one, Matt Church. What a man. Another shout out. (laughs) He's why he's done so much for me and my mindset. Um, To go like six, six months ago, we were having a conversation and we had a lot of tough conversations. um, But him... I was, I was just in a negative place and he gave me like a 20 minute rant on how, how much I pissed him off and he was, he really meant it. And it it was because I couldn't see how good I was and I wasn't taking care of myself and I wasn't loving myself and I wasn't living up to my potential at that point in time and he sat me down for 20 minutes and told me how much that pissed him off because he could see how awesome I was but I couldn't see it so the fact that he and I was like crying (laughs) but the fact that he could you know call me out on that and say that in a really caring way to get me to realize I'm actually awesome like I'm actually a really cool person yeah um I, remember, and, I think I remember you coming into Virtus maybe the day after or maybe the day of that chat. Mm. And, like, you usually bounce off the walls, but you're properly bouncing off the walls. Yeah. And that was ace. And it was hard because, like, you know, he, he asked me the question. Um, well, I can't even remember what it was now. It was something like, what, oh, what do you like about yourself? Yeah. Or, um, that was the question. Yeah, I think of what, yeah. yeah. I remember you saying that. And I had nothing. I literally had nothing to say. 
And in that point in time, like it sounds so stupid now. Yeah. <laughs> but in but that you had moment, to get, go through that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Had nothing. And I came up with like, I've got good taste in music and sometimes I'm funny. <laughs> and that was the only good things that I could think about for myself. So to get from there to um, him sort of helping me realise how cool I am <laughs> um, is good. really cool. So, like yeah, that. he's helped me with a lot of self-worth, self-love stuff. Um, good. Which is really cool. So okay. I really look up to him. If anyone hasn't listened to the podcast with Matt mm-hmm. Church, it's a few podcasts ago, or it's maybe 30-something. Uh, it's it's amazing. And I'll definitely get him back on at some point and we'll hit a couple of topics because we, we kind of dance around and hit a bunch of different stuff. I want to mm-hmm. nail down a few of the most important things at some point. Two more. Mm-hmm. Two more. Two more, and then I'll ask you for one more thing, and then we'll, we'll shoot. Then we'll wrap it up. Yeah. Another one, Jordy, who um, runs the boot camp that I'm working at. He is a phenomenal human and his his ability to bring out the best in people and to not accept people's stories is incredible. Yeah, I like that. Um, And his ability to be that solid, constant, consistent support um, to everyone around him while still, you know, letting them stuff up letting them make mistakes and still being there as that support and never getting frustrated and um, all of that. I really look up to his ability to stay so grounded and, um, yeah, his knowledge in wanting to improve the health and fitness industry as it is. He's another massive one. Yeah. Um, That one would be you. Stop it. (laughs) Um, I'm not just saying that because you're sitting here right in front of me. But, but make it quick <laughs> um, yeah like the help and support and in environment you've created and continue to create and develop and to make better is incredible like what what we're all doing here as a team yes it is a team it's all started from you and you continuously drive it and like put in the work and effort and you know, read all these books to develop yourself even more so that you can be better, so that we can all be better, so that all of our clients can be better. Um, it's awesome. It's really cool. You're welcome. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Last one. Actually, last two. Favorite quote? Mm. There's a lot. It still just comes back to how we do one thing is how we do everything. I knew you'd say that one. Yeah. Spot on. Now, last one. Tell me a joke. Oh, this was what I got stuck with in the internship. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Tell me a joke, mate. (laughs) Tell me a joke. You haven't done your job properly. You need to train me up more. (laughs) (laughs) Sure you got one by now. A joke. I'm pathetic. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I've got nothing what was Greg's joke when he came and walked in I'm, I'm going to steal people's jokes no, too late wow I don't know jokes and on that note with a great disappointment <laughs> Jess thank you very much for coming on the podcast <laughs> love your work <laughs> thanks for having me 